اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله. We praise Allah subhanahu wa taala and we thank Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to accept our ibadah. Allahumma amin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to grant our hearts sincerity and being gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa taala. We show our love and our submission to Allah subhanahu wa taala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to make us amongst the righteous servants. Allahumma amin. Ya Rabbi alamin. Alhamdulillah, in our journey to the to know the main theme of the surahs of the Quran, and we're still in the station of Surah Al Furqan. And I see the train, Alhamdulillah, is going a little bit well. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbi the 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 amount of the the information and the the background that people started to get about the surahs of Quran and how the patterns of Quran. And the style of Quran. And subhanAllah, it's a psychological and a spiritual orientation that we can get from the Quran. And still, we have Surah Al Furqan to know that the features, the attributes of the servants of the most merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are talking about Sifat, Ibad al Rahman. And I think this is the lecture number nine in this, you know, uh, sessions. And alhamdulillah, we talked today about one of the attributes of Sifat Ibad al-Rahman. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهُوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا Allahu Akbar. It's a good attribute. And those who are witnessing, who are not witnessing, who are avoiding being in places where the zur is happening, where the zur in the area, where the zur people are talking with zur, and I, I I I just mentioned the word without giving the translation immediately because I want you to focus first on witnessing those who are witnessing the zur. Those who are sitting on the presence of Zul. What does it mean, the word Zul? If you wanted to put it on the translation, it will tell you the false testimony. But the, the word Zul is have something bigger than this, larger than this, wider, deeper than this. The Zul is the term known for the falsehood the accusation, backbiting, lying, slandering, all of that is good, curse, bad words. If you are talking bad about somebody, that is called what? Zul. So Zul is a generic term. It's not only about the testimony. Someone went to the court, and before the judge, he said a, a false testimony towards somebody or against somebody. But Zur in this verse means those people who are avoiding being in such places where Zur is taking place. So you are in a gathering, for example, and people started to talk bad about somebody, making fun of somebody, mocking, cursing, backbiting, they are saying bad words. So if you started to avoid these gatherings, that means you are one of the servants of the most merciful. You are one of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ar-Rahman. So what about if you did the opposite? If you started to participate in law with them, in such actions. So you will be one of them. That's very simple. People started to talk about someone in his absence. People started to talk bad words. The Muslim, his ears is so sensitive to the bad words. He cannot listen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who are making fun of the religion of Allah and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, do not even sit with them. Because if you started to indulge with them, 
you will be exactly like them. And of course, the very famous story of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when somebody was, you know, cursing him, when somebody was giving him bad words, he was quiet, he didn't respond. And Rasulullah was sitting next to him and the man, you know, giving him bad words, cursing him, slandering him. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr, quiet. And after many times, Sayyidina Abu Bakr looked angry to the person and he said, like, you as well. He didn't say bad word. Like his tongue didn't say bad word. He said, you as well. So what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, he left. He left the place. Then, then Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, Sayyidina Abu Bakr followed the Prophet Muhammad. He said, what happened? What, 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 what did, what I made? Do you think that I made something wrong? He said, yes. While you was quiet, he was cursing you and the angels were putting good deed in your record and bad deed in his record. And when you responded, that means the anger appeared on your face, the angels left and the shaitan came. And I cannot stay in a place where the shaitan is. That's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, can you imagine even on the social media, on YouTube or some of the, 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 the common, subhanAllah, it's a common practice nowadays, especially from the young generation to be modern or to look that you are with the American style and you look uh, nice and uh, you know matching with the with the modern style of word every two three words they say the f word they say bad word they say the f word every two three words they put it in the in the conversation like like spices just to to show that he is funky you know with the modern style funky and and some people think it's a good thing to, to, to utter these words, to look nice in front of everyone. Yes, we, you might look nice for some group of people, but you will look very bad in the sight of Allah. In the day of judgment, you will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you have lots of bad deeds. So what are you going to do with them? Don't be funky. That's very simple. And try to control your tongue. And that is the case. So those who are not witnessing the zuhr with the generic term as we agreed, and listen to the other part of the verse, And even if they go in, into that such, such sins, means if they uttered something bad, or if they said something bad, they quickly repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are not angels, right? We are not angels. Yes, we do mistakes. What is the difference between the believer and the hypocrite? The believer, whenever he commits mistake, he goes back to Allah very quickly. But the hypocrites, they insist and they do not go back to Allah, and then we have another level, or a higher level than this. Those who are, who like their sins, and they talk with people about their sins, they expose themselves in front of people. You know, that is that makes his sin worse, and they come to another level, which is, which is to be the oppressor. So who is the oppressor? The transgressor, the one who committed the mistake and he insisted and he started to expose himself. Yesterday, I went to the bar, I did so and so. Yesterday, I was talking with that lady, I hang out with the girl. Yesterday, I watched this, I did that, I did that. 
Allah has covered him up and he by himself is exposing himself. That is the worst of the sinners. So the believers, that's why Allah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, listen to this verse, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا And go back, repent to Allah, all of you, with no exception. And then Allah called whom? أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ All believers, go back to Allah. Now you ask, Imam, if Allah is addressing the believers to go back to Allah, well, what about the sinners? What about the hypocrites? So if you wanted to be one of the servants of the most merciful, avoid being with people while they are cursing, while they are saying bad words. I told you, the ears of the believers are so sensitive. But Imam, you know what? Sometimes I'm in a gathering and they are backbiting. That happens a lot. Backbiting. They are accusing somebody, someone in his absence. And subhanAllah, he is in somewhere, but you have group are talking about him, talking bad about him. You know what? If you can stop this and give them the good advice, I told you. So what we need when we give advice, two things, the good timing and the good approach, right? Choose the best time and choose the, the good, the, the best way to approach them with the wisdom. So while they are talking, if you said, Salam Alaikum, brother, can I interrupt you, please? I, I just have a, a very simple advice. I heard Rasulullah saying this hadith. What's this hadith? Rasulullah one day said to the companions, Do you know who is the bankrupt? They said, yes, the bankrupt is the person who does not have money, who does not have dirham, who does not have dinar. With our current currency, the one who does not have a dollar in his pocket, this is the bankrupt. He said, no, the bankrupt on the day of judgment is the person who comes with huge amounts of hasanat, but he comes and he slandered this. And he accused that person. He cursed that person. And those people will come to him on the day of judgment. And they will ask Allah to, to, to give them his hasanat. So Allah will take from his huge amount of hasanat. And he will, he will, like, they will take from his own hasanat. Till his hasanat is finished. His um, huge amount of hasanat, your Quran, your salah, your sadaqah, that would be finished. And still, he oppressed lots of people. So he will have very long line waiting for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if his hasanat is finished, he will take from their bad deeds. Their bad deeds, it would be taken over his bad deeds and he will be thrown into the hellfire. That is the bankrupt. Say to them this hadith, and because wallahi, I love you so much, I do not want to be in the hellfire. So can we change the topic? You see, can we change the topic? Because I love you. I don't want to be in the hellfire. So let's change the topic. If they insisted, so what is the second option? You leave. You leave. Leave them. Okay. Is that Allah Khaira? I love you so much, but I cannot be part of this discussion anymore. Inshallah, I will come and visit you another time. Salam alaikum, alaikum salam. That's it. So that is that is how to finish these kinds of topics. Do not witness those sittings, even if it looks nice. Sometimes people making fun of someone in his absence, and inshallah, you are laughing, you are. Listen to Rasulullah One day, and I will, I will end my lecture by this story. One day, 
the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was walking and he noticed that there are two persons are talking and laughing. They are laughing because of somebody. They are making fun of him. They are backbiting their, their brother in his absence. So Rasulullah came close to them. And then he took them to another place where there is a dead body for a donkey. So he said to them, go and eat from that dead donkey. They said, Ya Rasulullah, Astaghfirullah, you want us to eat from the dead donkey? It's nasty. That's uh, disgusting. How could we eat that? And it is haram too, to eat the dead body. It is haram. He said, you already did. You already did. So it's easy for you now. Go and eat the, 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 the body of the dead donkey. They said, did we eat it? He said, yes, you eat it. Do you remember when we, you were backbiting your brother and accusing him, slandering your brother? You, you already ate the flesh of your own brother. So why do you think it is hard to eat the flesh of the dead donkey? That is Rasulullah, making them aware of the prohibition of being with such gatherings such discussions, it takes from your own credits on the day of judgment. You will feel and you will see the consequences of your actions on the day of judgment. It is so important to reflect upon the verse in the Quran, مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ SubhanAllah, no even such a, a word that he will utter, except he will have two angels to write it down, whether it's good or bad. And on the day of judgment, you, you read Surah al kahf right? So the criminals, that's how Allah described them. The criminals on the day of judgment will say, Ya waylatana, ma li al kitab la yughadiru sahiratan. We will, we will be in a severe punishment. What is happening? This book did not leave anything except it is mentioned. Except it's written. Even the atom of a weight, the weight of an atom. Subhanallah, the atom weight in the book, in the record. Sometimes you might, you know, like just pointing, pointing. You see that brother, <laughs> you see, see what he's doing. Sayyida Safiya, Sayyida Safiya, you know, Sayyida Aisha, one day said that. She wanted like to make, she was jealous. You know women when they get jealous. So she was talking about Sophia, Sayyidah Sophia, the mother of the believers, the wife of Rasulullah. And she said, do you mean Sophia? You see, she didn't talk. Do you mean Sophia? Like the short one? <laughs> Subhanallah. Rasulullah, his face changed. His face changed. And how do we know that Rasulullah, his face changed? When it turns to red, when it gets reddish, that means he's angry, sallallahu alayhi wa And there is a, a, a little vein here. Yeah, yeah. You, you see, it, it, it pops up when he gets angry here between his two eyes, sallallahu alayhi wa here in his forehead. And that vein, it, it pops up like he's angry. Then he said, Oh Aisha, you just did something wrong. If it got mixed with the water of the sea, it will change its color and its smell. Means you did something wrong. You did something huge, and it's a, it's a, it's. She, she just said, she just said that. She just pointed. She didn't say bad word. She, you might say. 
remember that's that, that's a description. If it is said with that intention, Rasulullah wouldn't say any comment. If you are describing somebody with pure intention, you are not, you know, insulting him. But if you said that with the intention that you are mocking, making fun, that's a bad thing. See, it's just pointing, not accusing. Some sometimes we interfere in the intentions. Wallahi, sometimes we we hire ourselves as gods while we are not gods. You, you know why the brother did that? Oh, you see, he oh he brought a he brought a new car just to show us that he is rich. Who told you about this intention? Who told you? The brother said that because he wanted us to to know that about his family. She came with the new dress to insult our family and to say you your dresses are so cheap. How many things that we have in our houses, especially with the sisters. You know, last time she didn't she didn't bring the diamond. Today she brought the, the, the diamond to tell us that they are better than, than us. Today she brought her, her daughter to say that she got engaged and our daughter did not get engaged yet. They, they wanted to show that, that they are better than us. Who told you about this intention? How many things we, wallahi, I'm afraid that on the day of judgment, that we will see all of that. We will, we will not have any chance to fix, any chance for reconciliation, any chance for rectifying our deeds. May Allah guide us to, to correct ourselves and to, to control our tongues. Allahumma ameen. Always say the good words. Always, before you say anything, if you just remembered a brother and he did something wrong, and if you wanted to make it to like reporting it, say, my brother, may Allah forgive him. My brother, may Allah guide me and him. My brother, so and so, May Allah bless him. Say, like, make your tongue always to say the good words. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hazim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihi min ayatin wa dhikr al-Hakim. Jazakumullah khairan. I want to thank each and every one who joined our session. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. I see Dr. Siddiq is here. He didn't join us and he will miss the cutting the cake. Yes, he will make. <laughs> yes, it's Dr. Rahim's birthday. Yes. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakallahu khairan barakallahu. It was two days ago. Yes. Jazakallahu khairan barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum.